Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you're all doing well. Today we have got a couple of news stories to get through in the world of tech and PC gaming. First up, we're going to be talking about AMD and Zen 3 and what type of performance improvements we could possibly expect on that architecture after hearing word from AMD executive Forrest Norad with an interview with The Street. Also, we got a new patch for Red Dead Redemption 2, which should hopefully fix some of the crashing issues and performance issues on specific NVIDIA graphics cards when paired with four and six core CPUs. And also we've got an update to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which finally nerfs one of the most OP weapons in that game. But first, today's video is brought to you by PowerColor and their Red Devil RX 5700 XT graphics card. The Red Devil 5700 XT features a 10-phase VRM, which is more than the 7-phase VRM found on the Reference 5700 XT, as well as most other partner cards out there. The Red Devil also offers a triple fan heatsink, which promises to not only keep your card cooler than the Reference design, but also significantly quieter. For more information on where you can pick up the Red Devil 5700 XT, as well as my full review, please check out the links down in the description below. So first up, let's talk about AMD and Zen 3, the highly anticipated CPU architecture, which is going to be launching sometime in the year 2020. An executive from AMD by the name of Forrest Norad did an interview recently with The Street, where he talks about Zen 3 and the type of performance maybe we could expect to see is he is calling this a brand new micro architecture that is going to offer a serious amount of performance uplift. Seeing what he had to say over here, he said, unlike Zen 2, which was more of an evolution of the Zen micro architecture that powers first gen Epic CPUs, Zen 3 will be a completely new architecture. So with Zen 2, obviously we saw the shrink down to seven nanometer, but that's really all that it was, which is, I'm not trying to, you know, downplay that. We, we stopped, we, they were able to get more cores on the chiplets. We were able to also get around a 15% performance uplift in terms of IPC. But according to NORAD, we're expecting to see even larger performance uplift with Zen 3. He goes on to say that he did qualify the remarks by pointing out that Zen 2 delivered a bigger IPC gain than what was normal for an evolutionary upgrade, and AMD has said it is about a 15% on average. Since it implemented some ideas that AMD originally had for Zen, but had to leave on the cutting board, however, he also asserted that Zen 3 will deliver performance gains right in line with what you'd expect from an entirely new architecture. And the last time AMD launched an entirely new architecture, we were talking about Zen 1, and that was, well, pretty big compared to what they already had out there on the market. And in terms of what types of performance expectations NORAD is expecting with Zen 3, he said that at a time when Intel is promising double-digit IPC gains for future microarchitectures, AMD is confident in being able to drive significant IPC gains each generation, which doesn't really say a whole lot, but basically what he is saying here is that if we saw this 15% IPC uplift, we could expect, I would say, to see at least that, if not even more, at least you know, going based on what this AMD executive is saying. But of course, it's his job to hype up you know, their architectures and things like that and try to sell more processors. So hopefully we'll find out sometime in the year 2020 when we do finally get to see Zen 3 out in the wild. Next up, Red Dead Redemption 2, which has had its, uh, let's just say it's had issues since the game came out a couple of weeks ago. Since the last big patch, uh, 1.14, I've had literally no issues with it so far on the PC, and it's been playing really well for me, but I, you know, I did that video as, you know, saying that basically it sounded like they fixed it. Um, in the patch notes, there was a lot of things that they addressed that people were having issues with, but I definitely still saw people in the comments section on that video saying that it was not fixed for them. So hopefully this new patch, which is addressing even more issues, will hopefully resolve it for you guys. If that's not the case, then please let us know down in the comments below. As far as to what they have fixed with the latest patch, which is live now as of November 19th, which was uh, came out yesterday basically, it was around a three gigabyte patch. They said they've offered improvements to address an issue that resulted in stalls on four core and six core CPUs, and that players with NVIDIA graphics cards and the four core and six core CPUs, as the issues are kind of related, should install the GeForce Hotfix driver version 441.34, which you can grab over on the NVIDIA website. It's not a Wickle driver, it's a Hotfix driver, so you kind of have to um, seek it out, but I'll leave a link with all of the other sources down in the description below if you guys want to go ahead and quickly grab that. Also mentioned in the patch notes are improvements to address an issue that resulted in the player's cores 
draining at a faster rate than intended in story mode when running at high frame rates and improvements to address an issue that resulted in player weight decreasing at a faster rate than intended in Red Dead Online when running at high frame rates. In case you missed that, there was a story about a, a few about a week ago or so. Uh, I never got around to covering it on the channel, but it, it was you know it was highly talked about over on Reddit. Let's just say, and basically it's exactly what it sounds like. If you were getting high frame rates, and this could easily be tested by just lowering down graphics settings and resolution uh, to get high frame rates, basically your cores like your health. Uh, your stamina and your weight in the game would be reduced as it was basically tied to your frame rate, which is obviously not the way it's meant to work. So you could basically sit there and like eat a can of beans in the game, let's say, which would, you know, bring your health back up and your weight up. And then it would, it would just go down almost immediately if you were playing at a very high frame rate. Although for a lot of people, high frame rates aren't really that much of an issue in Red Dead Redemption 2, so chances are you might not have experienced this unless you were getting like in the 1 to 200 FPS range, in which case then you must have a hell of a system. They also mentioned improvements to address an issue that resulted in players not being able to place waypoints on the pause menu of the map in the correct location. This was something that I personally did, uh, you know, I did experience when actually playing the game ever since the last patch. And there's a bunch of other things in here. We're not going to go over every single one in detail because we'd be here all day. Um, but other key ones that I wanted to mention were improvements to address an issue that resulted in all custom graphical settings reverting to a low preset when the game was updated. Which is kind of funny that they said that they fixed that because... After downloading this patch, all of my graphics settings were reset. Um, they weren't reset to the lowest preset, but they were all reset. Nothing was where I had left it before. Thankfully, I have screenshots of the graphics settings that I'm using for my gameplay. But yeah, it's still not... I wouldn't call this fixed. I mean, just because it's not getting set down to the lowest preset is not really a fix if it's resetting everything else. It had me at like 720p and all medium settings. So I would, I would hardly call it fixed. It's just... It's kind of changed, really. It's it's there's been an evolution in this bug to just be a different sort of you know amalgamation of the same exact bug. So hopefully that gets resolved as well for the next patch, which hopefully doesn't reset my graphics settings, so I don't have to go through 40 plus goddamn options every time there's an update. Also, they mentioned improvements to address an issue that resulted in random crashes and the error Red Dead Redemption 2 exited unexpectedly during gameplay. And this was something I saw mentioned countless times in the comments section of all of my Red Dead 2 videos. People on Twitter, people on Reddit, on forums. This has been one of the biggest crashing issues. So hopefully whatever they did to fix that resolves it for everyone that was getting that error. And maybe not just a specific type of hardware configuration or something. Hopefully it's, like I said, hopefully it gets all resolved. Last up, before we get out of here, quickly I want to mention Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which also got a November 19th patch, which is bringing a bunch of general fixes to things like Spec Ops, the Ground War Mode, Mission Challenge, and things like that, but also some weapon balancing, and one that I think the community that has been playing Modern Warfare since it came out last month have been all waiting for, and that is balancing to the 725 shotgun, which has been extremely overpowered. The thing is basically a sniper rifle with buckshot, and even though they have made a couple of tweaks in the past few patches, they've been like kind of, at first they kind of like buffed it a little bit um, by what, taking away some other things and then they nerfed it again. And now this seems to be the biggest change so far to the 725 shotgun. So hopefully after this update, it seems to be balanced a little bit more to where a shotgun maybe should be. The changes coming to the 725 shotgun are a small reduction to base weapon damage range, which I honestly, they could use a significant reduction to the weapon damage range. They also mentioned significantly reduce the damage range added by attachments. So obviously if you're using certain attachments, it maybe would, bu would buff your damage and it's going to reduce that quite significantly according to this. Also a small hip fire spread increase and reduced effective damage at the hip. So thankfully, seeing some changes here coming to the 725 shotgun, I'm sure those of you out there that have been playing Modern Warfare have been uh, privy to the power of the 725, whether you've been receiving or dishing out the damage of the 725 shotgun. It's been pretty brutal ever since the game came out, and I'm going to hop into a lobby later today and uh, we'll see, you know, how much it's actually been affected if people are starting to dish the 725 after these patches hopefully fingers crossed on that one but i'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here guys as always i look forward to your feedback thoughts opinions comments below as always and especially with the red dead redemption 2 stuff please leave me any feedback on that down there if you continue to see issues as that continues to build my knowledge base as i haven't been having any issues as of late so 
I can find out more about issues from you guys, it'll help me on my end, and maybe I can go and try to find fixes and bring you guys tutorials like I've done in the past for other games as well as Red Dead Redemption 2. So leave me that feedback down below if you enjoyed this video or learned something new. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on and subscribe if you're not already. And if you've been here for a while, ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a video as soon as it goes up live here on the channel. I'm going to go and get a haircut now and look fresh to death as I like to do every about four to six weeks. So I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Ciao.